April 18th, the Biden administration announced that the Transportation Security Administration will no longer enforce the federal mandate requiring masks in all U.S. airports and onboard aircraft. Immediately, masks are optional for all airport employees, crew members, and customers inside U.S. airports and on board aircraft. This is the captain speaking. Um, as of right now, all flights can get through. We have, we have required, we know it's required a mask. So we can keep on the whole thing. As you can see, many people, middle of flights, just on Monday, found out the news about a, a judge that struck down the CDC's mandate for masking while you're on mass transit. Things like airplanes. If flight attendants, a uh, flight personnel, they announced it over the speaker from the pilot, everyone's celebrating. Now, uh, this news comes down because, as I mentioned, there's that federal judge out in Tampa, and she ruled that it was unnecessary. Let's watch that. Out of Florida, where a federal judge has just overturned the CDC's national mask mandate for planes and other forms of public transportation. Joining me now is NBC News Justice Correspondent Pete Williams. So Pete, um, will this, does this mean that everyone can take their mask off inside a plane or is there another step? Well, that's what the judge says. Uh, we're waiting to hear what the Centers for Disease Control, TSA and the FAA say. Uh, I doubt that uh, planes in flight, for example, know about this or that most airlines are even quite aware of what they're supposed to do now. No comment yet from the Justice Department about what it will do, although I suspect that the government will seek a stay of this judge's order. So this is a federal judge in Tampa, Florida, who has ruled in a lawsuit brought by a group called the uh, Health Freedom Defense Fund. And two women who said that uh, they didn't like wearing masks on a plane. One of them said that her anxiety was aggravated by having to wear a, a face mask. So again, that federal judge, um, there was a, she was appointed by Donald Trump back in 2020. And there was a Tampa Bay Times article about who she is. And there were stories about it when it happened. Uh, and that makes all the sense in the world that she's the one who ruled this. Let's look at some of the details about her. Her name is Catherine Kimball Mizell. She's a Washington DC based lawyer and Lakeland native. And she's present, again, this is from 2020. She's President Donald Trump's nominee for a vacancy on the Tampa based US District Court for the Middle District of Florida. Mizell, who was 33 years old, would be among the youngest federal judges in the nation. She's been an attorney for eight years and in her career, she's handled two trials. Both occurred when she was a legal intern before she graduated from law school. In September, a committee for the American Bar Association sent a letter to the US Senate Judiciary Committee expressing their opinion that Mizell is not qualified. This is from the American Bar Association. <laughs> now, ordinarily, the letter said a nominee, a nominee to the federal bench should have at least 12 years of experience and in lieu of that, substantial trial or courtroom experience or compensating accomplishments in law that can make a nominee qualified. Now, lastly here, this is the first time I've read one of these in 26 years that finds somebody not qualified and I'm puzzled by it. That's what Senator Dianne Feinstein said at the time as well. So in her opinion, this judge, Mizell, about this mask mandate, this is what she said. Now, remember how she was unqualified and she's about to prove it to you. She says, wearing a mask cleans nothing. At most, it traps virus droplets, but it either it neither sanitizes the person wearing the mask nor sanitizes the conveyance. Mizell's views on the efficacy of masking are directly refuted by a recent international research study that found masks play a crucial role in slowing virus spread. And that's reported last month at Science News. The Mayo Clinic also continues to state that face masks combined with other preventative measures can help slow the spread of the virus that causes COVID-19. So I mean, it's not a surprise wise, it's not a surprise at all. But the thing is, is now we have to go through the now people on planes throwing their masks up in the air like they just graduated high school and having all these celebrations. Now, if something happens with the pushback and, and maybe some legal uh, challenges to this and it flips back and forth, it's a whole new level of the look what the, 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 the deep state has done to us again. And that's what we're set up for. Yeah, you know what's crazy is I'm not really as bothered by this as um, some other people might be. Uh, I, you know, obviously, 
uh, this judge is is problematic, right? Um, but I think TSA was about to lift the mask ban anyway. They had pushed it back like by two or three weeks uh, recently, but they were about to do this anyway. And what's most important for people to understand is that like. Doing this on planes is actually less problematic than people would assume because these planes actually have air filtration systems. Whereas most of our airports, malls, you know, publicly shared spaces don't. Like these enclosed buildings, these enclosed spaces, a lot of them don't have air filtration and therefore the air quality is porous. And what I would like to see, honestly, is us use some damn government largesse to put uh, freaking competent air filtration systems in a lot of our buildings, man. That would put a ton of people to work. And if these, you know, these cheap businesses didn't want to pay for it themselves, we can subsidize it as a government for an actual public good and put people to work. That's what I would actually like to see because I think people would be surprised to understand that it's like actually less uh, problematic on an airplane where the Air is constantly being recirculated and refiltered, um, as opposed to basically everywhere else that we go um, when we leave our house. Well, I mean, if you bring up the point about air filtration systems and airflow and all that stuff making the air clear, uh, that could be a point you could probably make to argue for this. That's not the points that they're making. <laughs> no, hell no, no, of course not. Th that that lady was just making a political appeal. Like we know what that is. Like that that she she had nothing to do with um you know empirical data or science. Uh, this lady was just making you know political dog whistles. We did like to. Maybe have an honest conversation if someone does feel that this is needed, or then of course because by the way everyone wants to take off their masks, but we'll see if we can get there at a normal pace.